Um, if you could turn with me to Revelation uh, chapter 5, verse 2. And I feel like this evening, and I've shared this before, but at other internships, but the Lord was reminding me of this today. I feel like the Lord is, like, he's asking us a question. And if you if you could hear what heaven is asking you, this would be part of what heaven is asking you. And, you know, when somebody asks you a question, you've, you've, you're the one who comes up with the answer, right? When, when someone asks you your name, you tell them your name. When somebody asks you something a little, a little deeper, like, you know, what's going on in your heart or what's been happening, what's going on in the inside of you, like, you, you figure it out, you stop and you figure out and you bring an answer to that question that's not rocket science. But here you have heaven asking John, the apostle, as he looks up into heaven, he gets asked a question. Like, I don't know what I would do if, if an angel boldly proclaimed a question at me. You know, I'd, I'd tremble. I'd be like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't have an answer. And here John is provoked. And if you read in, in Revelation chapter, chapter 5, verse 2, it says, Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? Who is worthy? Who is worthy? And he's hearing this proclaimed in heaven, in the holy place where God is. You know, the son, the slain lamb of, of God, he, was, he is in heaven. Jesus is in heaven. Glorious, exalted, the one who died for you, the one who poured out his blood for you, is in heaven, is in this, has been placed in the center of all eternity. And an angel asked John, who is worthy? The father's in heaven. This is his son in the center of all eternity. His son gloriously positioned. And the father hears the angel asking this man, Who is worthy? Who is worthy? And I believe it's this question that we wrestle with our entire lives. And we, so part, most of the time we don't even realize it's that tug of war on the inside of us. It's that fighting inside of us. Who am I going to live my life for? What is my cause? What is my purpose? Why am I going to do this? Why am I going to walk in holiness? Why am I going to say yes to God? Why am I going to surrender to him? Why am I going to follow him? Why am I going to pay a price? Who is worthy? Who am I going to do this for? Who am I going to live this life for? And what is completely fathomless, what is so hard to comprehend, is that most of the world and most of us, we still haven't fully grasped who is worthy. We're still trying to figure that out. Can you imagine the Father in heaven and this angel proclaims in a loud voice, who is worthy? And the Father's there and he knows what his son's done for you. He knows the depth of his sacrifice. He knows what he paid. He knows the wrath that he poured upon his son. He knows the punishment that his son took for you. And the Father is in heaven and he's hearing a question being asked about who is worthy. I mean, as a father, this is his son. Can you not just imagine up, just roaring up inside of God's heart is that response, my son's worthy. Him, this man, this man, Jesus Christ, he is worthy. But yet we struggle. The reality of our lives shows where we are in that journey. And it's a constant journey. Even when we've come to the cross, even when we've had a revelation of the Lamb, it's still a constant journey of finding out this morning who is worthy. In the midst of daily life, in the midst of school, in the midst of my relationships, in the midst of my response to things, who is worthy? Who am I doing this for? In the midst of your relationship with your parents and their expectations upon you. You know, in the midst of the the reputation you have to uphold in the midst of your career, in the midst of a family, in the midst of marriage. It's all the same thing. Who is this for? What is this life about? Who is worthy? Who is it? Who is Jesus to
to you? Who is he? What is he like? Like, I want to know, what does, how does Jesus feel like to you? What does he, how does, how is he inside of your heart? Who is God to you? What is his face like? What is, what have you found out about him? What are you confused about him? Who is he? Have you found that he's worthy? Have you found what he's deserving of in your life? Because heaven An angel asked this to John. And I believe if we would look up, just as he did, and this is John the Beloved. This is a disciple of God. So if we're in the We Know It All Club, like maybe John, you know, he's God's, you get asked this too, no matter where you are, no matter if you got saved yesterday or you're not saved, or you've been that devout, steadfast person, God, st- you know, that angel still said to John, who is worthy? Who deserves it? What are we doing this for? What are we going to spend our lives on? You know, and is. I can remember gr- just wrestling with that as a teenager. It was, it was, I was trying to grab hold of something. I needed something to anchor me down. I needed to get hold of a cause. And I was looking, I was trying to, f- you know, okay, careers, 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 which, which option, what am I going to do? Maybe that will, I'll find something that, that I can find purpose in. And you can, and you will find, find purpose in that. And, and that's, got, that's part of God's heart for you. But underlying and underlying, underneath all of that you have to find ultimately who that is for just like Nia was saying you know she's saying I want God to use me I want God to use me why because she wants to spend her life on him and this evening I want us to I want us to find that worthy one Wherever you are in your walk with the Lord, wherever, however you walked in to this room this evening, I want us to find him all over again. I want us to see him all over again. And I was reminded of Abraham and Isaac, if you look in, in Genesis 22. And here you have Abraham, he's been tested by God. And the Lord had come to him and asked him, to sacrifice his son. And this is what the father said to him. He said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his, chil- two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the, off- for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place that God told him to, d- to go to. And if you go further down, verse 6, so Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took the knife in his hand and a knife and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, my father... And he said, here I am, son. And then he said, look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb? Where is the lamb? Isaac Isaac knew that there had to be a lamb. There had to be something sacrificed. There had to be something consumed by the fire of God. And this question arose in him. He's like, where is the lamb? Where is where is the, the the where is the lamb that will be consumed? Where is the lamb that will be sacrificed? Where is it, Father? Because I don't see it. And we have wood and we have a knife, and I know that there has to be a sacrifice. And when I look at my life and I look at the just the the filth and the anger and the pain and, and whatever is it, it is that you carry in your life when you stop and you really, really look at your life, you realize you desperately need a sacrifice. You desperately need someone to stand in your place. I desperately needed Jesus 13 years ago and I desperately need him today. I need a sacrifice just as much now as I did 13 years ago. I still need him. I still need his sacrifice. I still need the lamb. And Isaac realized that, and so he began to look. Where is the lamb? Where is, where is the lamb? And the lamb's not, 
You know, Jesus was a lamb. That doesn't mean he was, he's a fluffy white lamb. That means that he stood in our place and he gave his life for us. And he was fully consumed with the fire of God's wrath. And he became our sacrifice. He became the one who would stand in our place. But he looked. He had to find the lamb. He had to find him. We have to find him. We have to search for him. And everything changes when we find him. Those moments when we truly, truly find him, everything changes. It's never the same. There becomes hope. There is hope when someone can stand in your place and you don't have to be the one that receives what you deserve from God. There is hope. There is life, there is joy, there is a future, there is goodness, there is kindness, there is mercy. When God, when we allow the Lamb to come and we allow Him to stand in our place, there's forgiveness, there's a slate wiped clean, there's pain that goes away, there's freedom. In the most hopeless situation, I can remember times in my life, lies that I buried so deep inside that were never going to come out that I was never going to expose because I was too ashamed and it was I needed it to be hidden but those moments when I brought that place to the cross and to the lamb I could be clean I could be forgiven I could be new I could have hope again I could trust again I could be vulnerable again but it's just the same now it's just the same when I, you know, when I struggle now or when I, when I find things tough now. It's the same thing. I still need to find the lamb. I still need to go, where's the lamb, Father? Where is your son? Where is the worthy one? Who can I bring my heart to? Who can I bring this, this part of my life to? Who can I bring my questions to? Who can I bring my struggles to? The lamb, Jesus, the one who gave his life for us. That's who we come to. And the father, he says, I mean, I don't know how the father even got these words out of his mouth. But he tells Abraham, he says, do not lay a a hand on... Hold on, hold on, back up. No, that was an angel. But verse 11, it says, The angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And so he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not lay a a hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God. And since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abraham lifted his eyes and looked. He looked. And there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and he took the ram and he offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide. The Lord, the Father. Why would the Father provide? Why would he provide a sacrifice for me? Why? I'm not not anything impressive. I haven't done anything great for him. Anything I've ever done that's been good has been him. You know, why would he why would he want to do something for me? Why would he want to provide anything for me? Why would he want to sacrifice his son? Because he loves me. Somewhere deep inside God's heart is a love for you. Is a real, raw, tangible reality of oceans and oceans vast, vast from the east to the west. As far as you can see of love for you. Because he's so convinced that a relationship with you is completely and utterly everything that he wants, everything that he craves, everything that he yearns for. He wants family. He wants sons. He wants daughters. He wants you to know what it's like to be in his kingdom, to be forgiven, to be free, to be full of joy. He's desperately, desperately, desperately yearning for you to know the raw reality of his love that's why a father that's why a good 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 father 
would give his son. And something happens when we see the lamb. Something changes. There's this thing that comes inside of us when we really, really look at the cross. There's a willingness that starts to happen inside of our hearts. It starts to let go and allow God to have his way, no matter what the cost. And it's not even a cost anymore. You realize the foolishness of not following him. You realize the the wall that you build up for yourself, the agony that you create for yourself, the pain that you create for yourself by not following him. I love this in, in Matthew four, Matthew Matthew four. I have to slow myself down sometimes. I get so excited. But Matthew four verse eighteen. It said, "And Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, and saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, because they were fishermen. Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men." Then immediately they followed him. They found him. They found the lamb. They found Jesus. So immediately, no question, no wondering inside, immediately they decide they are going to let go. They are going to drop everything and they are going to pursue him. They are going to follow him. They are going to go where he goes. They are going to walk with him. They are going to eat with him. They are going to sit under his teachings. They are going to find out from him who he is. And when we find the lamb, that surrender starts to awaken inside of our hearts. That desire inside of us to say, I let go, God. I let go of what I'm holding on to. I let go of what I'm struggling with. I let go of this fight. I let go of this rebellion. I let go of this anger and I come to you and I'm going to follow you. I'm going to drop it at your feet and I'm going to walk with you. And I'm going to go with you because you're worthy. Because I found the worthy one. I found something to give my life to. I found someone who deserves everything. Everything, nothing, nothing holding back. And you know, when you struggle, and when I struggle or I'm faced with a decision, I'm like, God, I don't know what to do. I don't know. You know, and there's that, there's still my flesh and there's still that tension inside of me. But when I bring that part of my heart to the foot of the cross, I can let go. And I can follow him. They, they let go of the very thing that, they was, that made them self-sufficient, the very thing that protected them, their, their ability to earn income. And Jesus doesn't call you to be stupid. He calls you to follow him so we don't be stupid. But, I mean, they let go and they followed him. They let go of the things that they relied on and they came into this reliance of God. They came into this trust of God. And, and letting go isn't just letting go. Like, what are you self-sufficient what do you depend on? What do you depend on for your livelihood, for, for that place inside of you that makes you feel like you can do it? And when you surrender and when you let go, let go of that, you'll, you'll read later on, they saw Jesus doing all of these miracles and his fame spread. The name of Jesus, his fame spread across the land. And when we let go, you will become part of seeing Jesus' glory spread. You will become part of seeing the greatest privilege, the greatest honor that you could ever possibly be part of with your life. When you let go, you get to see his fame spread. You, you become part of him receiving glory. You become part of him receiving honor. That is such a privilege. It's not a cliche. It's not something we just sing. It's something that you become a a part of that movement that sees him receive glory, that sees him receive honor. (sighs) Simply just by letting go. And it's like Paul said, he just, he counted all his loss. He counted everything else as loss compared to the knowledge of knowing Jesus, compared to the glory of God. Nothing else was of worth. That meant nothing else had that claim on his heart. Nothing else counted but honoring God, but bringing glory to God. Why? How could you ever get to a point in your life where you're going, nothing else matters but the honor and glory of God? How do you get there? 
that's radical. <sighs> that's extreme. To go, all I desire, all that is of importance, all that is of worth to me, is Jesus receiving honor. <sighs> That is so upside down from everything we're taught from the moment we're raised. You know, oh man. Even Facebook becomes like an honor game. You know, it's like, well, you know, oh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like zoned out of it right now. But even Facebook, you know, it's like, well, I have this many, follow- this many people liking me on Instagram. I have this many people following me. And, and really, you're just saying, oh, I'm getting this much credit. Oh, I'm this popular. Oh, I'm this. You know, and God's, <laughs> his Paul going, I count it all as loss. Because it's all temporal. It's all going to burn. It's all going to wither. It's all just a big roller coaster of people's emotions and people's insecurities going up and down and we're just riding on with it. Or we get off that train and we go, God, you're worthy. Nothing else matters. Nothing else counts. I have found the worthy one. I have found the deserving one. And I feel like I've come to a place in my life And sometimes it's daily where I'm just going, I don't want that fight. I don't want to fight Jesus on him loving me, on him winning my heart, on him having his way. I don't want there to be a tug of war inside of me. I want to raise the white flag in front of him and say, surrender. And I mean really surrender. Surrender. And that's what I invite you to do. To come before him and surrender. To hold out that white flag. And say, Jesus, I surrender to the worthy one. I give it up. I lay it down. I end the struggle. I end the war inside. And I surrender to you, Jesus. I surrender to you, God. And the Father, he's searching. His eyes are going across the earth. And they are looking for someone whose heart belongs to his son. And he sees his, fa- he sees his son in heaven. He sees the sacrifice of the lamb. He sees what his son has done. And then he looks down on the earth and he searches. Why does the father even have to search? Why does he even have to look to find someone whose heart belongs to his son? It's someone just, but he looks. And he looks across the earth for those people who are raising that white flag to the Lord and saying, Jesus, I surrender to you, God. Every day I lay at your feet, I give it all. I empty myself, I lay it down, and I say that you are worthy, you are deserving, you get the honor, you get the glory. We love you, God. If you guys would just stand with me. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. And I just want you to to focus on the Father right now. The Father who gave His only Son for you, who gave His beloved one. And just hear Him ask you, have you found Him worthy? Have you found Jesus deserving? You are worthy, God. You are worthy. You know, so many times I come before God, I'm like, God, this is all I have to give you is me. Just my little insignificant life. 
That's all I have. And I want to give him so much more. Because he deserves so much more. And then I always hear him say to me, Mary, that's all I want. That's all I want. That's all I want is your heart. Oh, God. So if you're here and you're saying, you know what, I want to, um, this isn't salvation message, this is you and Jesus right now in your relationship with him, wherever you are, whether you know him or you don't know him. And you're saying, I want to bring my heart right to his feet right to the foot of the cross, right at the beginning of this internship. And I want to surrender. I want to hold up that white flag. And I want to see God have your way. I don't have much to bring you for giving your son's life, but I have my life. And I freely give it to you. I want to invite you to come forward. Kira ma so ya raba sande Kira ma so raba raba sanda renda raba sande This is just you and him just you and him just you and the man who died for you the one who gave everything for you it's just you and him alone your eyes looking at his blood your heart at the foot of the cross looking at his sacrifice looking at his life poured out looking at him giving everything for you him laying everything down for you and him asking you this question the father asking you is my son worthy is he worthy and God we say yes we say yes we say yes God you're worthy yes God you deserve it all yes God yes father your son is worthy He is worthy. He is worthy of all we have to offer, of all we have to give. He is worthy. And we surrender, God. We surrender. Just tell him, just say, God, I surrender. God, I surrender. Kira ma so ya la ma sanda renda la ma sonde. Kira ma so ya la ma sanda. There is a sacrifice for you. There is a sacrifice for you. For every dark place in your life, there is a sacrifice for you. So that when the enemy comes and the enemy condemns and the enemy taunts you, all you have to do is come before him and plead the blood and plead the blood and plead the blood. There is someone who wants to stand in your place right in the middle of your mess right in the middle of your failures of your weaknesses of your pain of that aching inside of your heart he wants to stand right there with you and take that from you you are worthy let's just sing that you are worthy Jesus Rabba Rabba Sunday.